Now I'm over here with Edwin. Uh, got to shoot a video and everything, so I just want to check in with you so I don't get a text in about two hours. Where are you? <laughs> don't come to my house. <laughs> He's not filming. So I'll, cut, I'll give you a call in about, uh, what, two hours? An hour? Whatever. Just have my food ready, woman. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me do this. All right. Are you ready? So I got it. I got the thing. Uh, I wasn't aware that I was going to get it. They don't give you, like, people think that you just... They uh, notify you, like the guy with some desk, like, you know, Cassine Bentley there, you just won an award. No, and then you get to sign off on it, like, a, like, a, like whatever. I didn't even know. I won't, you know what happened? I was, um, I got a text from Chris Garcia, and Chris Garcia always sends me a text, but it's always something like some asshole shit linked to it. So I find out, I get it, I, I open my Facebook, and it's just sitting there on my wall. Now I'm, Man, a lot of things don't shock me nowadays, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, but this one, it was like, I was so happy, but I was so like, what the fuck? I, you know what the cold part is? I knew, I didn't feel like I didn't deserve it. Because I, you know what I mean? Like almost comics, you have horrible self-esteem. You know what I mean? You think, oh my God, I didn't deserve that applause break. It's just a, whatever. But I didn't know, I didn't know, and I read it, and I was kind of like, first I was like, this shit best racial humor you don't feel guilty laughing at what kind of stupid shit is that but the dope thing is is like i worked really hard in this last year because i was reaching a real bottom real bottom i talked a lot about that a lot with people i remember i flipped out a kelly anakin show i threw a bottle and i couldn't take being around all these losers you know what i mean because i was surrounding myself i wasn't taking the steps i was just kind of like immersed in shows that i liked but i know that you know, I wasn't mad at people passing me up because I was doing it my way. I had no problem. I was carrying my zone, but I got tired of it. You know, you can only do so many, like, you can only do so many shows at a restaurant. You know what I'm saying? But then I go, I start really, you know, working harder. I start going to therapy. Real, real stuff. Therapy, this is why a lot of people should go, man. Because people get scared about what a therapist is going to tell you. It's really them figuring out, making you want to challenge yourself. And here's the thing is just like quit sitting on things, just do it. Do more, do more, and having you slowly but surely the confidence to do more. And I was doing it, man. I was just I was really just striking out there. And then the, it became clear, like, like what I wanted to be on stage and how I wanted to it to look and bigger than San Francisco. A lot of people get trapped up in the scene. And I'm a I'm not an OG, but people know I've been around like before comedy. I've been doing comedy almost six years. But the problem was I was becoming like the, what was Kevin Avery? He called it the comedy cop. You know, when you're just like, you're around it so much, you're, you're actually like chiming in about the scene and all you like, like on Facebook, people look on these networks, it's like the old Yahoo group, but like on steroids. People just complain and bitch and moan and about things other than their own career. You know what I'm saying? But then I saw that what Jabari was doing, and Frankie Quinones, because I was doing a show with them, Caffeine Comedy. It was at a Caffeine Cafe. And I saw how they came in, and they just had so much. They were doing it like they had a year left to live. And I saw that. I was like, man, I got it. I can't. I was doing stand-up longer than them. W. Bell, I saw it. He had reached a point in his career when it reached, it reached a bottom. Because uh, people know the story, him and Kevin, you know, doing well. You know, they're doing the thing. Uh, they go on, I think they went on a USO tour or some crap, like a Daniel Dugar Japan tour. It didn't go so well. It was one of those sets where you really walk home. I, this is why I heard it. I mean, it's the truth. But this is why I heard it. It was like, it was one of those times where you really assessed who you are as a comic, as a person. And he really said he took a break, two, three months, went out. He really just wrote, changed it, his career, came back with a brand new perspective. Because he's also been at seeing the, that brainwash. Uh, all stars click. They were very specific, and I mean, you saw Kamal really, you know, really attacking the mic and really having a perspective. And he gets premium blend and everything, and then he starts doing his own shows, which really was a big thing. I always remember too, because his shows were really very unique, and I really liked them because they had its own identity and it, it fit Kamal. It's it's very hard for I think a comedian 
to take their vision or what's, or what's unique about them, and it goes from stage to uh, to other aspects of their career, from the flyers to your identity to your brand. And then I see like this, people hear the word brand, they think it's something evil. You know what I mean? And he had a certain brand, and the, sh the shows he had were very, I went to two of them, dope shows. They were just, it was just something, uh, you see the way his career shaped, and then he made his own show which was still uh, unheard of. You heard comics, you always would hear about people doing one-man shows, but their career was over. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's some guy, he was from the 80s, and now he's on a one-man show, and you're like, what the, oh, man. The, the general consensus is, is that what he did was very ballsy because certain black people, especially in the elite and people in terms of politics, I mean, or people in the church, which is a big, which is really big. That's the bank uh, group of people that are gonna have an issue with them. That a lot of people have already started coming out and saying that they're not, can't say they're going to not vote for him, but they're pulling out of supporting him. So, which is still dangerous. Is that, okay, I'll vote for you, but I'm not gonna rally for you because you said something that offended me. And that right there is something where this issue should be taken up by more black people in the community, especially with political power, because there's no other group of people actively challenging them and not in a way that's angry, but just having a, a balanced intellectual discourse about this pertinent issue. You know, you have, a, you have, we, you have black people, black men, essentially, uh, that are on the down low. They can't even come out the closet and say, I like to suck dicks. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> He's got to go to a club across town or, or be online on some weird site and do that. And it's, that is so shameful as a group of people that want to make all this. We keep saying we want to make progress, but something like this happens and we just keep doing this weird retrograde. And when Barack Obama said, I support gay marriage, and you see these people backing out, it's a sign that we have to, like people, just get, step into 2012 and be like, look, if you want to suck a dick, suck a dick. I don't give a, If you want to eat pussy, you want to wear a Yankees cap and wear it like a coochie jacket with no bra and walk around Queen Latifah, that is fine. But you know how much, how, much, how much homosexuals help the black community. Black women get their hair done by a black gay and they're gay. The fucking choir director, the dude's flaming like a hot chip Dorito. He's flaming up there in a lavender shirt playing the piano like Little Richard the Fifth or something like that. And you're not gonna tell me, and and then every most fat black women got some gay black dude. They say girlfriend, but it's not girlfriend. So you gonna tell me, and then you gonna he could be good enough to make do your perm or touch up, but he can't actively go out there and hold hands with his girl, his boyfriend at Jack London Square. Go fuck yourself, you such an idiot. You know what I'm saying? But I hope Barack Obama even says more stuff. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, can you do that? Because I'm very, I'm really low. I know, I'm I know. Really you, you, Top you, you, me you. off, buddy. This is a good tea, man. Yeah, man, it's peppermint. <laughs>